Right. Thank you, Cahillac. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, I want to welcome the initiative by the Labour Party in tabling this private member's motion on gender-based violence. While these issues, I think, have been discussed uh, both in this House and certainly outside of this House over the last number of weeks, I think it's important that we are having a focused discussion and indeed we'll be having a further discussion this afternoon as well uh, more broadly. The motion rightly commends uh, the courage of Natasha O'Brien, and I want to acknowledge her as well here this morning, uh, and acknowledge the courage in which she has shown uh, over the past few weeks. And to reiterate, I think, all of our collective rejection of gender-based violence in any form, uh, it's important that we all work together. And to be honest, I think we have, when it comes to this issue, certainly in the time that I have been in this department. This government is not opposing this motion. We are supporting and working with you, uh, Deputy. This motion covers a number of different aspects of a response to gender-based violence. Uh, and I welcome the recognition also of the significant policy changes that have taken place to address this. The Zero Tolerance Strategy, which is our third national strategy on domestic, sexual and gender-based violence, one which was developed with the support of colleagues here, but also also with the sector in general and victims in particular, but also the new uh, Domestic Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Agency, which is up and running since uh, the beginning of this year. As the House knows, improving our response to these awful crimes and to how we support victims in particular uh, has been a priority since I became Minister for Justice. And again, I'm grateful to the support of government, but so many members in this House in implementing changes that seek to improve above all the outcomes for victims uh, and we have made improvements uh, and I'm very conscious that we have a lot more work to do but we have made improvements since 2020 uh, and in particular the publication of supporting a victim's journey uh, we have seen key recommendations from the O'Malley report uh, implemented so the rollout of the divisional protective service units across all of our divisions of Angarda Siakana and I believe the Gardaí are making really good progress in their training in their response and their engagement with victims uh, we have the registered intermediaries who are there now to assist vulnerable witnesses giving their best evidence in court. Uh, we have a dedicated sexual offences unit within the office of the DPP uh, that's only been established in recent years and I think will bring an added value to that office. Key to delivering on the ambition of the third national strategy is that zero tolerance of any kind of domestic, sexual and gender-based violence and the attitudes which underpin so much of what we see. Uh, Coon will become and has become operational this year but is really now starting uh, to get into the body of work that it has to do. We've allocated increased uh, and unprecedented funding year on year for combating domestic, sexual and gender-based violence for supporting victims uh, and this includes specialist organisations to provide that course of accompaniment uh, amongst other things. The budget now is at 59 million euros so that's an increase uh, of over over 30 million euro in the last three years and I have every intention of making sure that come this year's budget we increase that further but that services are able to spend it, that they're able to expand uh, and that capacity is grown year on year. The launch of the Zero Tolerance Strategy, the establishment of Coon to build on that work uh, have been key markers along the way to making so much of the necessary improvements but we know there's more to do. Uh, this is not a, a two-year, a three-year or even a five-year project. This is a, a generational change, a shift in attitudes and behaviours that will take a lot of work and sustained effort. But I'm absolutely uh, confident that we can, if we continue to focus on this and to keep prioritising this as an issue, that we can create that change. Uh, and we have a better sense now of what, ex what is happening and what has always been happening. The Women's Aid Report, which you mentioned, the Sexual Violence Survey from last year, and many, many other reports from organisations really show us the reality of what is happening and bring into stark uh, picture again that the women in particular but the the victims behind so many of these crimes and really reiterate how much work we need to do to support victims and survivors we are aiming for zero tolerance to get there we have to change attitudes to change the behaviours that underpin it and this does require a new approach to education what constitutes it the harm it causes the responsibility each person has in society to eradicate it and that means a fundamental change in mindset so in particular when it comes to our schools and that's a key part of the zero tolerance strategy education with new curricula for our junior cycle we have the senior cycle now developed and juniors are uh, primary school as well is the next stage, making sure that we do so in the most, most age-appropriate way. To focus on some of the issues in the motion that are tabled today, uh, I'm acutely conscious that coming forward to report sexual uh, and or domestic violence can be a deeply traumatic experience for victims. I've met many, many women who've gone through the system and they've said that going through the system itself was more traumatic than what had happened to them. Now, that's the worst thing that any of us can hear when someone takes the step to come forward, that the next stages are even more traumatic. So we need to do what we can 
to improve the system to prevent that from happening. Um, you know, we're, we're all very conscious of our role here in making sure that we don't intervene or that we don't overstep the mark. At the same time, we have a role in setting out our legislation, making sure that our criminal justice system is more victim-centred, that it deals effectively with victims and survivors. To that effect, I've introduced preliminary trial hearings, which seek to reduce the unnecessary delays which occur in our courts. Uh, we've doubled the sentence for assault causing harm. This ensures that there is a maximum sentence there that judiciary can use, and obviously we do have other structures in place, in particular the DPP, where there are appeals or where appeals uh, are necessary in certain instances. Uh, in terms of making sure people can access the courts, it is about more availability, Deputy, and obviously the 24 judges last year that were added to the system will help. There is a need for 20 more as part of the overall review, and I intend to move on that as soon as possible and making sure that that is spread equally across the country so that irrespective of where you are, you do have access to the courts and to the supports and services. The motion calls for a review to the practice of suspended sentences and an increased urgency in the development of the sentencing guidelines, and they are one and the same, obviously, in the work that the Judicial Council is ongoing. Um, while we have no direct role in, in, obviously, the work that they're doing, it's important that they come back with those recommendations as quickly as as possible and that they're implemented as quickly as possible. Uh, the Judicial Council Sentencing Guidelines and the Information Committee are progressing that work. Uh, the Attorney General has been engaging with uh, the Committee in that regard. Two offence areas were prioritised at the outset. Uh, this is relationship-based violence in the District Court uh, as well as um, incidents relating to serious car accidents as well. But this will be provided to the Board of the Judicial Council. Um, the Sentencing Guidelines and the Information Committee expects to be ready to do this shortly and obviously, as I said, we want to see this as quickly as possible. Um, there will be detailed stakeholder consultation with organisations and experts as well to make sure that this is right. The Judicial Council has also made available as a resource to judges a database containing every sentencing judgment delivered by the Course of Appeal and the Sentencing Handbook, so in the interim to try and make sure that that information is available to our judiciary. On calls for reforms to the court system to better protect and support victims and survivors, we are leading an ambitious programme of family justice reform. And I say that because the two are very much connected. One of the first conversations that I had with a victim of a very serious violent assault was the fact that she was going through the family court system at the same time where the perpetrator was trying to gain access and custody to their child. And the trauma and the fact that no system was talking to each other, it's really important that the development of the family justice courts, that there is that intersectionality, that there is that overlapping, that one side is talking to the other, but also there's an understanding going through a family justice system that there are victims of domestic and sexual violence, course of control, and that abuse can continue into the courts. And I hope to be in a position uh, in the springtime or in the awesome time to be able to progress the family courts uh, bill, looking at specialist judges, looking at specialist courts, and as I said, making sure that very much overlaps with the zero tolerance strategy. And character references the Sexual Offences and Human Trafficking Bill currently before this House and which will be enacted before the summer recess focuses very much on vouching of character references uh, in sexual offences trials. This will apply to the list in the schedule of sexual offences um, and it's designed to protect the victims at that stage from further traumatisation during a sentencing hearing but making sure that if someone's willing to put their name forward to a character reference that they're willing to be cross-examined on this and to stand over exactly what they are saying when somebody has been found guilty. Training for all involved in domestic, sexual and gender-based violence for those in particular working in the criminal justice system is a key action of the preventative pillar in the zero tolerance strategy. Uh, there's been quite a number of actions uh, progressed, particularly for Angarda Siakana, but there's work still ongoing with our legal profession, with our solicitors, our barristers, uh, and obviously in the area of training around our judiciary, there were really positive uh, programmes of training around victim support, around bias, uh, but also looking beyond that as well, making sure that our newer judges are consistently upskilling so as part of the Judicial Appointments Commission uh, bill which was passed, um, there is a very clear uh, requirement there that any new judges would be required to have continuous professional development and training and that they would show that uh, as they look to seek to improve their own position. We now have a national perpetrator programme delivered by Move and Mend. It includes a suite of programmes for men who have been violent. This builds on the work of Choices, which is the National Domestic Violence Perpetrator Programme that's been in place since 2017. Uh, and the probation service is extending this approach to include offenders who have been convicted and who are under their supervision. And I believe there's more work that we need to do there, in particular working with those who are, uh, who are perpetrators. 
coming to the call in the motion for the introduction of a victims commissioner and I know that we've spoken of this before uh, it has been examined previously there is more work I believe needs to be done uh, particularly given the focus or the development of Cuin at the moment um, to see how we can add benefits to the support that's needed for victims. Um, I believe that when a victim engages with the system, as I think we all do, they should know what to expect. They should be confident that they're going to be treated respectfully and sensitively, that their legally enforceable rights are uh, there and what supports are available at every step in the process. So we've been working to try and make sure that that information can be provided through the victims' charter, through awareness raising campaigns. Even the court service themselves have developed an interactive suite so that victims can know before they go into the courts. We do have, if I could just very briefly finish on this, we do have a victims forum which was established. It's co-chaired by a representative of the sector with my own department and that is bringing together all of the groups looking at what more we can do to support and to focus on victims and in fact our next meeting is next week. Remarkable. There's work obviously being done on the Defence Forces regulation uh, and then finally just in relation to the multi-annual funding. This is very much a priority uh, as the funding has increased. There is a plan that Cohen is introducing a standardised multi-annual funding structure. Uh, this will be action by quarter or three of this year and this is very much making sure that the services that are being provided right across the country that they have sight of what they're doing how they can provide that service and that they know that funding is going to be there for them but that's a key Remarkable. part of Remarkable. the work that's been done and i'll come back on maybe some of the other points if i can